All right. Thanks for that introduction, Denise. Welcome, everyone, and thanks again for taking the time to join today's webinar. Uh, my name is Emily Kuhn, and I'm the Communications Specialist here at RealityWorks. Um, today, we will be discussing several things. We will chat briefly about um, who we are here at RealityWorks. We'll talk about what are soft skills and why are they important. We will, of course, be sharing our best practices for teaching these soft skills. Then we will review our Real Career Employability Skills Program. And like Denise said in the beginning, we'll dedicate some time at the end for some live questions and answers. All right, with that, what is RealityWorks? Well, our mission here at RealityWorks is to create learning experiences through products and programs that enable educators to show the outcomes of behavior and choices. Our focus is to help teachers educate young people through the combination of hardware, software, learning aids, and curriculum. We are very proud to be in 67% of school districts in the US, 90 countries around the world, and to be able to say that 6 million students have been served through the use of our products. So why soft skills? Well, RealityWorks was first established over two decades ago with the creation of Real Care Baby, which we created to better address teen pregnancy prevention, parenting skills, child abuse and neglect, and career skills. Over the last 20 years, we have had the opportunity to speak with numerous educators and professionals across all CTE pathways. And recently, we've been hearing more and more from educators about the lack of soft skills in today's students and about that need for tools and teaching materials that would help educators address this topic. In other words, we saw a need for a comprehensive, ready-to-use program, and that led to the creation of our Real Career Employability Skills Program. Now, we want to be a resource for educators. That's why we're hosting today's webinar. We want to help you equip your students with the employability skills that they need to succeed. So, what are soft skills? Well, soft skills are also known as employability skills, executive functioning skills, emotional intelligence, and job readiness skills. They're considered that bedside manner of the workplace. We here at RealityWorks believe that hard skills might get you in the door for an interview, but soft skills will help you get and keep a job. And most importantly, we believe that soft skills are vital for all career paths. Why do soft skills matter? Well, we dug into the research and we come up, came upon study after study that shows the importance of these soft skills. A few that stood out to us are on your screen including a 2013 study by Millennial Branding that showed 61% of managers and 65% of Generation Y employees, those born in the 80s and 90s, believe that soft skills are the most important ones you can have in the workplace. A poll conducted by CNBC in 2014 revealed that 44% of employers choose soft skills as the biggest gap in the U.S. workforce. And finally, research conducted by Harvard University, the Carnegie Foundation, and Stanford Research, research Center excuse me, concluded that 85% of job success comes from having well-developed soft skills, while only 15% of job success comes from those technical skills. So what can you do to help your students learn these vital skills? Well, here are a few best practices that we've learned through our research and conversations with educators. Best practice number one is engage your students. We are an experiential learning company after all. We know that experiential learning works for a reason. Methods of teaching like listening to lectures and watching videos work for many topics, but we found that educators who are succeeding at teaching soft skills are using engaging, hands-on activities in conjunction with those other methods. After all, integrating a variety of learning styles into your lessons can increase the speed, the quality, and retention of student learning. For example, videos speak to visual learners and lectures can help verbal learners. But experiential learning, especially in a soft skills program, makes use of a variety of learning styles like social, logical, and more. So how can you engage your students in the development of soft skills? Well, one idea is to start each class with a handshake. After all, a person's handshake can make a huge impression in any setting, particularly a business one. It's considered a powerful tool in a job candidate's networking arsenal. Starting each class with a handshake can help you accomplish several things. First, it can teach your students the best practices of a polite greeting, like eye contact, a firm handshake, and a smile. It gives your students regular, consistent opportunities to practice a very basic soft skill. It'll equip them with a skill that they can take with them throughout their careers. 
And of course, it speaks to your relationship with your students. They'll see you taking the time to personally greet them every day. Now, we've included a link here on this slide to one blog in particular that stood out to us during our research. We encourage you to check it out afterwards to see both documentation and a video that one educator posted of the impact this practice had in her classroom. Another idea for engaging students in soft skill lessons, small talk conversation cards. Small talk, like a handshake, is considered a foundational soft skill. It's where all conversations begin. It shows you can think on your feet, it demonstrates intelligence, and of course, it speaks to your ability to communicate. Now, educators who use these conversation cards regularly are giving their students a chance to become used to conversing with people they may not be used to speaking with. They get practice being polite, positive, and professional, and they learn valuable networking skills. Now, we like this type of activity because it can be implemented in so many different ways. It can be used as an icebreaker activity for the first few minutes of class. It can be used to wind down the end of a class. It can be used to create some sort of regular small talk conversation card activity like Small Talk Tuesdays or something like that. Now, we've listed a few scenarios on this slide that you can use to create these cards. You could also um, set up a mock workplace scenario where students have, say, one minute to introduce themselves to an initiated conversation with an employer. Another best practice for teaching soft skills is role play. Now, we all know role play is great for many reasons. It builds confidence, it promotes self-esteem, and it's a great method of that student-driven active learning. Classic scenarios include job interviews, dealing with customer complaints, handling disruptive clients, and marketing new products. But some new ideas we've learned from educators include proposing a 21st century dilemma, such as, do you answer a text in the middle of a staff meeting? Do you take a moment to check your personal Facebook page at work? Do you answer your cell phone during the workday? You could also set up some sort of debate, propose to your students you've, that you've finished your assigned tasks at work, and propose that they determine whether they go home early or do they stay to finish other tasks. You could present your students with several tasks, all of which need to be accomplished by the end of the day, and have them role play. How do they prioritize? How do they determine which ones to deal with first? Remember to be creative. Instead of going off a predetermined dialogue, Give your students prompts and allow them to be creative. You could also bring in others. Invite additional teachers, administrators, or even community members to participate in a role play scenario. So now that we've covered a few ways to engage your students, let's move on to our second best practice, which is to instill professionalism in your classroom. Now, I was recently in an Illinois welding teacher's classroom. And the instructor, who had come from industry, was going on and on about the fact that his students couldn't communicate. They didn't know the value of showing up on time, etc. Well, a great place to start developing those skills is right there in the classroom. After all, your students might not be experiencing these requirements anywhere else. By demanding professionalism in the classroom, you're setting your students up to succeed in the workplace. That said, the key here is consistency. Every day, we recommend you expect your students arrive on time, come prepared, use proper spelling and punctuation, and dress for success. Now, we know you might not be able to do all of these items every day. The idea is to mimic an office environment and get your students used to those professional habits. Like a real office environment, we encourage you to make your expectations clear and lead by example. For instance, we talked to one educator in Michigan who started dressing up for class every Friday, and after a few weeks, his students started to do the same. Again, you're setting up your students for success by getting them used to these professional requirements. Now, if soft skills are vital for every career, why wouldn't you be teaching them in every class? Our final best practice is exactly that. Don't save lessons on soft skills for only career exploration classrooms or career-focused classes, but address them in every class. Whether it's a 30-second handshake or a 30-minute lesson on critical thinking, soft skills can be addressed in every classroom. And often, your students might not even be aware they're learning them. Remember that collaborative work helps build communication skills. Assignment tweaks and last-minute activity changes help build flexibility. Open-ended questions help build problem-solving skills. Reflection activities help students develop those critical thinking skills, and oral speaking assignments help build that self-confidence. 
Again, there will be expectations of these executive functioning skills in every single workplace. So why wouldn't you want to cover these soft skills in every classroom? Now, we know that finding the time to research and come up with these engaging new ways to teach soft skills takes time and may not be realistic for everyone. That's exactly why we created the Real Career Employability Skills Program, to make teaching these soft skills even easier for you. We wanted to provide educators with a ready-to-use, out-of-the-box program that would help teach the most important soft skills no matter what class they taught. With the Real Career Employability Skills Program, you can engage your students with hands-on experiences like role play, icebreaker activities, and discussion activities. You can implement individual lessons and activities on a daily basis if you wish. And you can teach an entire unit on soft skills. The 20 included lessons make for about a month of instruction. Or you can pick and choose to supplement an existing program on soft skills. So how do you do all of these things? Well, you can do them because we've included curriculum, student workbooks, activities, and teaching materials all in this program. We've included role play scenario cards so you can give students real life scenarios that they can practice. And we've made it so that the workbooks can be used as soft skill reference guides of sorts for your students to reference after your program has ended. Now, the Real Career Employability Skills Program includes lessons on all 20 of the skills that you see on your screen now. In fact, the lessons give students the chance to apply each of these skills two to four times per lesson. For instance, the first skill, communication, um, is covered by getting into verbal communication, nonverbal communication, and even written communication within this curriculum. We have students learning to write business letters, talking to each other, presenting to groups, etc. In the time management lesson, participants begin to learn how to prioritize tasks and identify and overcome barriers to time management. They're given the chance to dig then into their own personal schedules and determine how they're truly spending their time and identify the changes they can make in order to better manage their own time. In the networking, in the negotiation lesson, excuse me, students are given the opportunity to not only learn the five steps of the negotiation process and role play, but they're given the opportunity to walk through no fewer than five scenarios to determine the best negotiation process for each. There is truly a breadth of content in this program. So how can you get this program into your classroom? Well, we've made it available in two forms. You can get a five-year school-wide site license that will give every instructor in your building access to the online curriculum and teaching materials, or, you can get all of the physical items that you need in one convenient, already printed package. And additional workbooks can be ordered via our online store anytime. Now, we do have a promotion going on right now in which you can save on those printed student workbooks through October 2016. For details on how you can save, we encourage you to visit our website, and we'll also include information in our post-webinar email. All right, with that, we'd like to open up the webinar to any questions or concerns that anyone might have. You can go ahead and ask a question using the questions and answers button on your screen. Thank you, Emily. Yes, we'll be waiting for those questions to, get, to come in. I see the first one. Um, they're asking about how much time that the, the program would take to teach. I know you said roughly a month's worth, but um, I think that with the supplemental program, um, you could easily choose, you know, up to five lessons, you know, per week, or you could even decide to do some of the extension ac activities if it wanted to last longer than a month if they wanted. So, again, very customizable from what I understand. Um, all right, we have another question. Um, oh, it was saying that a little bit of um, technical difficulty on the audio. Well, that's exactly why we'll include that recording for everyone. Um, if, in case anyone did experience those technical issues, we'll make sure that you can watch the presentation on your own time afterwards. Okay, here's another one. What is the target age group for the material? That's a good question. The target age group for the material is ideally secondary, so high school ages, but we can, you can certainly use pieces and parts of this program in a middle school classroom or even a post-secondary classroom. Um, we had someone write in to say that um, they teach employability skills uh, at a community college, and they are wondering if the material is uh, inclusive for that age group as well. 
I'd say absolutely yes. And you, again, it's it's customizable. You can pick and choose which lessons best apply to your program. If just a handful would supplement your existing program, or if you're going to implement the whole thing, um, you absolutely can use it at that level. Um, another question says, will this material be appropriate for students with special needs? And I would say that um, this really was written more for um, the, the average high school student and not so much with, with um, special needs students in mind. Not to say that it couldn't be adapted, but I would um, point the individual teachers to some of the lessons, look at the content and see at some of the scenarios and see if there's any um, adaptive strategies that could be used. That, I would leave that up to the teacher's discretion now. Um, we have a question, how many minutes does one lesson last? Oh, well, each lesson is about 45 minutes to an hour. All right. It says, um, what about the cost for a countywide entity or a district that supports multiple districts? Um, our um, strategy or our, our um, bundling is set up at the um, school-wide building level. So if it's um, a district that has um, many high school buildings that would be at that building level. However, I would really encourage you if you've got um, a unique um, um, number of schools or a very large amount to uh, give us a call and uh, talk to um, our, um, our sales department. We've got um, great um, consultants for each state and they could customize a program that really meets your needs. Um, we have a question or a comment here that says, we don't always have one-to-one -one devices in classrooms. With the online access package, is there ability to print elements out with the package or must all lessons be completed online? That's a great question and one we've gotten before. I mean, actually, with the online package, that gives all instructors in a school building the ability to print. Um, the students do not go online to complete the, the lessons. I'll check to see if we've got some more questions. Um, it says, is it possible to view demo content? And actually, if you go on to realityworks.com, there's a product page um, all about the employability skills program where you can find a sample lesson, you can view a, um, some short videos on it. So um, there's definitely more information to be found on that product page. We have a question, it says, the 499 package described as having slides. Is this actually CDs? No, it is actually, you receive a link two um, PowerPoint slides that go along with the, the program content. Um, it says, how often is the material updated? Um, if you purchase the five-year license, do you get updates? Um, right now, because this is a brand new program for us just this year, um, we don't have any updates yet because it is, it is um, so new. But we, um, our vision for the long-term um, um, program is to keep adding to it whether it be along um, pathway specific lines. We're not exactly sure yet, but um, you can um, be watching for more information as time goes by. So again, this is brand new. So at this point, um, this is what we have to offer, but we surely do expect to add to it as time goes on. Um, we have a great question here. It says, are there techniques that can be incorporated into an online course? Absolutely. If you go into the teacher guide into all the lessons, um, all of the scenarios are there for you. There are also um, self-assessment tools that can be uh, shared with students that you could actually build into some of the um, online CRM systems if you have one that you use. So um, I think there are a lot of pieces actually in this program that lend themselves very well to um, working with uh, existing CRM systems. Oh, here's a good question. It says, is the printed material available in UEB Braille? And that is one that um, I'm not aware that it is available right now. I, because I'm not uh, familiar with that technology, I'm not sure if the format that it's in right now could be translated into that, but that is something that we can certainly look into and get, um, get back to you after the, after the webinar is, is concluded. Thank you very much. Uh, another question, where can I find the visuals to go with the teaching these soft skills for my nonverbal students? That again is a, a great question. I'm hoping some of the, some of the slide presentations have visuals, um, but that might be something that once you get into the lessons and are looking at some of the, the activities, um, you may need to go online and to um, 
find some find some you know visuals whether it be on the Creative Commons website or even uh, YouTube. Um, you may even know of some um, places where you go to already to find some visuals that would would go with some of the lessons. But I would definitely think that with the explosion of material online, um, that you would be able to find something that would work uh, for those nonverbal students. Uh, it says, what is a good way to uh, teach respect in high school? And I think if you go to actually the um, responsibility lesson that's in this program, um, in fact, many of the activities, um, there are so many related soft skills that um, teach respect kind of within another soft skill. Um, I think that um, you could use some of, the, some of the things that are in the lessons to, um, to teach respect as well, because respect goes hand in hand with so many of those other foundational soft skills. All right, Denise, thank you. I think we'll have time for one or two more questions. I do see we have a plethora of questions still waiting, and we, we so appreciate everyone's interest. Um, if we do run out of time, uh, the good news is that we are capturing um, the information on who is asking these questions and who we have and have not answered. So anyone whose questions we don't get to during this presentation, we will absolutely be following up with you via email um, or possibly a phone call after the presentation. So Denise, why don't we take uh, maybe one or two more questions, and then we'll, um, we'll let everyone go for today. OK, I see one final question here. It says, um, is the computer program purchased, um, if you do purchase it, how many site licenses are included? And again, it is at this, um, the school building level. So one purchase is good for um, access for every instructor within that school building. Okay, well, thanks, Denise. And thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to attend today's webinar. Again, you will receive an email following this presentation that contains not only the recording, but a PDF of the presentation slides and the details on our current employability skills program promotion we've got going on. Um, and again, anyone whose questions we did not have time to address, will also be following up with some individual um, contacts to you to make absolutely certain that your questions and concerns are answered too. Um, and for everyone else, if you have any additional questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us using the information on your screen. We can be reached via email, information at realityworks.com, or by phone, 1-800-830-1416. Thanks again, and we appreciate everyone's time today.